Hi class, welcome to our last chapter. This is a chapter on volume. We're going to be finding the volume of all the different three-dimensional figures that we've been talking about, the three-dimensional solids. Today we're talking about prisms and cylinders and their volume. So this is 13.1. Here we have a bunch of three-dimensional solids. And so when we think about volume, what is volume exactly? Volume is the amount of space a figure encloses. It's measured in cubic units. So it's how many cubic inches or how many cubic feet or how many cubic meters fit inside a solid. So all of these different ones up here, how would you fit a cubic inch inside this? How many of them fit inside is what it's asking right here. Okay? So when we take a look at this one, find the volume of the rectangular prism. It's five inches wide, three inches deep, and four inches tall. So how many cubic inches could fit inside this prism. If you think about five inches this way, one, two, three, four, five, and then three inches deep, kind of a thing, then we would say that there's 15 <laughs> cubic inches on the bottom, wouldn't we? Isn't there 15 cubes on the bottom? And then there is another 15 cubic inches on the next row. And this is the first inch, second inch, and it goes four. So there would be another 15 inches on that third inch is high. And then we would complete it with another 15 inches on the top. Would you agree? So there is 15 in each of these rows. So we would say that it's 15 times 4. There is 60 cubic inches, or inches cubed. And the way we get that, we take 5 times 3 times 4 to get 60. But our, our definition, our formula that we're going to use, is it's the area of the base. The base is a rectangle. So it's 5 times 3. It's the area of the base multiplied by the height. And the height is 4. So again, we took 15, that was the area of the base, and we took that 4 inches high. And 15 times 4 get right, gets right back to our 60 inches cubed. So that's the formula that I want you to write down, everybody. For any prism, it could be an octagonal prism, a hexagonal prism, a triangular base prism, a rectangular prism, no matter what prism it is, if you find the area of the base, this capital B right here means the area of the base, Whenever I use a lowercase b, that's the, the length of a base. If I use a capital B, that means it's the area of the base. The area of the base multiplied by the height. And that's going to get you the volume of any prism. So let's take a look at this one. What is this thing? This is a triangular prism, right? The two congruent parallel faces are congruent triangles. So we would take the area or the volume, sorry, the volume equals the area of the base times the height. And the base is a triangle, isn't it? Isn't this base right here a triangle? Or this base right here a triangle? So the volume, the area of the base right here, is one half base times height. And we're going to multiply that by the height of the prism. The height of the prism is the distance between the two bases. And that's our number 12 right here. So now all we got to do is find the base and height of our triangle. So you can see that it's the 45, 45, 90. So when we have the hypotenuse to get to the legs, we divide by the square root of 2. 8 divided by the square root of 2. Let's multiply both top and bottom by root 2 to rationalize the denominator. So we get 8 root 2 over 2. And then if we divide both sides, or if we divide both top and bottom by 2, it is 4 root 2. So this side is 4 root 2, and this side is 4 root 2, because opposite the 45 degree angles are congruent. OK, so the area of the base is 1 half base times height. They're both 4 root 2. The base and the height are always perpendicular. OK, now we can. Um, simplify the area of the base, and then multiply by the height of 12. So I would say, what's 4 root 2 times 4 root 2? 4 times 4 is 16, and root 2 times root 2 is 2. 
So it's 1 half, 16 times 2 is the area of the base, multiplied by the height, which is 12. Well, 1 half times 2 is just 1, so it's 16 times 12. And 16 times 12 is 192 cubic feet, or feet cubed. There's our first one. Here's another one. The weight of wet snow is 0.575 times the volume of snow in cubic inches divided by 144. What a formula. So the weight of wet snow is 0.575 multiplied by the volume of the snow divided by 144. And this is a real formula. It's not just something that's made up. If you want to find out how much weight is in your driveway, you could use this same formula. So what we need to find, class, then, is we got to find the volume. Okay, it says, how many pounds of wet snow will I shovel off my rectangular driveway that is 75 feet long, 30 feet wide, when it snows 4 inches? So if you can kind of picture, here's my driveway, okay, it's 75 feet long, and it's 30 feet wide, and it snows 4 inches. So what I would want to do here, it's a rectangular prism, so the volume equals the area of the base multiplied by the height. The height is 4 inches. The base is a rectangle, the area of the base, so it's base times height. However, I'm not going to take 75 times 30 because I need to get this in cubic inches. So let's convert our units into inches, shall we? How many inches long is my driveway? Well, 75 feet multiplied by 12 inches my driveway is 75 times 12, which is 900 inches. In the same way, my driveway is 30 feet wide, so if I take 30 times 12, 30 times 12 is 360 inches. Okay, now that we know that, we can find the volume. The volume equals the area of the base, which is 900 times 360, Multiplied by the height, it snows 4 inches. All right, if we multiply all three of those together, we get 1,296,000 cubic inches of snow on my driveway when it snows 4 inches. What a day, right? So now we're going to multiply that by 0.575 and divide it by 144. 0.575 multiplied by the volume, which is, again, 1,296,000. Divide that by 144. And how many pounds of wet snow am I going to shovel off my driveway? When you multiply the 1,296,000 times 0.575 equals, divided by 144, there is 5,175 pounds of snow that you're shoveling. That's why I'm so ripped, everybody. Woo! All right. Next one, how do you find the volume of a cylinder? Guess what, everybody? It's the exact same formula. However, it's even an easier formula because the area of the base, what is our base of a cylinder, everybody? The base is a circle, isn't it? And if it's a circle, the area of a circle is pi r squared. So instead of writing down this formula, everybody, it's the same formula, the area of the base times the height, but the area of our base is a circle, so it's always going to be pi r squared. So the volume equals pi r squared multiplied by the height. That's how you find the volume, how many cubic units fit inside any cylinder. So on this first one, how many cubic inches of garbage will fit into this garbage can? This garbage can is a perfect cylinder, isn't it? It has a diameter right here of 18 0.25. So we'll need that to find the radius. The volume equals the area of the base, which is pi r squared, that's the area of the base, multiplied by the height. So the volume equals pi radius squared times the height, and the height is 32 inches. What is the radius? It's half of 18.25, right? Half of 18.25 is 9.125. 9.125. So let's answer in both ways with approximate and with exact. 
So in terms of pi, 9.125 times 9.125 times 32 is 2664.5 times pi. And that is in cubic inches. There is our exact volume, 2664.5 pi inches cubed. Now, if we multiply by the pi button, you would get an approximate answer for the volume. The volume is approximately 8,370.77, again, cubic inches. That's how much trash fits inside this garbage can. What if we have an oblique prism or an oblique cylinder? Does our formula change? Let's say this is, oh, I don't know, maybe it looks like, I'll just take a guess. Let's say this is 12 quarters, okay? Does it change at all if I have a stack of quarters that looks like this? Wouldn't it still be 12 regardless whether it's stacked one on top of each other or whether it's slanted? So our formula doesn't change. Just keep in mind, this is the height of the prism. Right here, this is the height of the prism, not this one or this one. The height is the perpendicular distance between the two bases. So you want the 90 degree angle, okay, that perpendicular distance. So our last one for today, find the volume of this cylinder. Well, we know what the volume of a cylinder is. It's the area of the base, so pi r squared times the height. Okay, the radius, that's easy enough. The volume equals pi radius squared. The radius is three and a half, isn't it? half of the diameter of 7, we got to multiply that by the height. So the height, everybody, is this distance right here, right? It's the perpendicular distance between the two bases. We don't know what it is, but we can find it, right? As we have done a thousand times in this class. Maybe we've done it more than a thousand. It'd be interesting to count. Pythagorean theorem, right? A squared plus B squared equals the hypotenuse squared, c squared. We'd get 49 plus height squared equals 625. Subtract 49, h squared equals 576. Square root our height, so h equals 24. Our height is 24 centimeters, so 24 goes in for h. Again, just like the last one, in terms of pi, we would go 3.5 times 3.5 times 24, and we'd get 294 times pi cubic centimeters. And then our volume as an approximate, multiply that by 3.141592, all that, you'd get 923.63 centimeters cubed. And that is the volume of prisms and cylinders. Let me know if you have any questions when you get to class tomorrow.